Hi, Tana Marshall here with your Feel Good Friday message. So as promised last week, we are continuing our conversation about anger. And today we're going to talk about how to handle confrontation with love. When you have a situation come up, someone has upset you or a situation has come up that has upset you. And maybe there's a specific person that you need to have a conversation with that is so uncomfortable. It's never fun. A lot of people avoid it. <laughs> I've had people that I've worked with in the past, like department heads, that did not like confrontation. And so they didn't deal with specific issues within the department that needed to be dealt with. And so they just perpetuated and it wasn't good. And everyone was pissed, like, why aren't you taking care of this? But there is a way to handle this with love. And as I talked about last week, I was so angry with my gardener for cutting off all my beautiful hibiscus blossoms. <laughs> and so I really had to think about how do I want to handle this? When I talked to him next week, because I, I had to have a conversation because it wasn't just that there were other things like he'd left my water running in the backyard and I didn't notice it till hours after he'd gone. He'd unplugged a fountain in my backyard and didn't plug it back in after he used his power tools. He, you know, just stuff like that. And he cut off all my things. There've just been things that have been done and things that didn't get done that needed to be done, but it was just too many things. And they've been accumulating in the hibiscus bush was kind of the straw that broke my camel's back. And I couldn't, I was like, I have to have a conversation with him. But so when you need to talk to somebody, what I want you to think about is how would you like to be approached if you were going to be on the receiving end of a confrontational conversation? And I tried to think about this because I didn't want to come at him like, you killed my bushes and you killed my hibiscus. So I didn't want to do that and make him feel bad or make him feel wrong. And that's the thing. I think we want that. We want people to know you were wrong. Or what you did was bad. And I'm the one to point it out and punish you. And you should feel horrible about it. Nobody likes that. You're just going to get a defensive reaction. People immediately that the defenses will go up. And then they will probably push back against you. And then it will not be a productive conversation at all. So you want to make sure that you approach people in a way that helps them relax and know that they're going to be safe in this conversation. Because a lot of people are like, oh, what did I do wrong? Especially if there's somebody that keeps coming at you all the time and telling you what you did wrong and you didn't do it right. I've had bosses in the past like that. that and the, the more they told me what I was doing wrong, the worse I did in the job. And that was very rare in that one. That's when I was really, really young. But it, that's what happened. You know, someone is constantly criticizing you and it really wears on you and it affects your self-esteem and it affects your performance, whether it's just you as a person being in the world or work that you're doing or a project that you're working on or something that you think you're doing well. And someone keeps telling you that you're not and correcting you. So going back to my gardener, I had to think about, okay, how do I want to approach this? So I just came at him with, came at him. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> I just told him I needed to talk to him. And I tried to be from an energy of not blaming, just pointing things out. Like, okay, there are a few things I need to talk to you about. And, you know, this and this and this. And it wasn't like you're bad, you're wrong. It was just bringing it to his attention because these were kind of thoughtless, irresponsible things that he should be aware of. He should be more attentive to these things because if he did this to all his clients, I'm sure he'd be losing them <laughs> left and right. So I just wanted to say, you know, I noticed these things were happening. So please be aware of that. And with this, I did tell him I was really, really upset about this, but you know, I understand you probably thought you were doing what, what you should be doing, what you thought was best at the time, but just you know, and that's why I set up these new guidelines. Okay, I'm going to make it really easy on you. Just do this and this and this and don't touch anything else. And I will let you know if I need anything. And he was, he was fine. He was receptive to it. He was really mellow and kind about it, which was nice. So it, it was, and it was a relief to talk to him because like I said, I had been kind of thinking about it and stewing about it for a whole week. Cause I would vacillate between, Oh my God, I'm so mad to, okay, I have to figure out how to handle this with love. I have to remember to talk to him with love <laughs> and think about how I would want to be spoken to in that situation. So just put yourself in that other person's position and think about how, if, if the situation was reversed and you had done the thing that was done to you or just done the thing in general that you need to speak to somebody about, how would you want them to approach you? What, what words would you want them to say? What energy would you want them to bring to you? And it's usually good to start off with something positive. And say, you know what, I know you do a great job with this. And I really, really appreciate that, which I meant to do with him. And I didn't, I feel bad about that. But, <laughs> but 
But if you can start with something positive and then go, but you know what? I do need to talk to you about this. Then people are going to feel that positive reinforcement. And then it's more constructive criticism rather than just criticism or blame, which makes everybody feel horrible because then you feel shame or you feel guilt. And those are horrible emotions to feel and carry around with you and feel like someone else is looking at you, inflicting those emotions on you. And, you know, we choose how we want to feel, but it's very difficult to maintain a positive mental state if someone is blaming you or shaming you about something. So I'm sure you don't want to do that to anybody else because we don't like it done to us. Nobody likes that. So think about how you can approach the situation with love. And if you are a boss or a manager or a supervisor, I want you to especially pay attention because you will have the respect of your subordinates way more than if you come at them with blame and trying to correct everything that they're doing and being critical of everything without any positive reinforcement. There has got to be positive reinforcement always, especially in that kind of position. You are in a position of power or authority. Please make sure you are expressing your gratitude and appreciation to the people under you all the time in general. And then especially if you need to have a conversation with somebody about their performance, whatever it is, or if there was an incident, just please put them at ease. Let them know they are safe in this conversation because we all want to feel safe in any environment, regardless of who we're dealing with, whether it's a friend, a family member, a coworker, a boss, you want to feel safe and that you are not going to be attacked in a conversation and then have to defend yourself. You'll get a much better reaction from people. You will have a much more positive response and it will have a better outcome overall because if they feel reinforced and supported within these things that you need to point out to them, they're much more likely to correct it or to change if if change is necessary in, in an easier way that they feel better about. And then you will feel better about it too. And not every situation calls for a change or correction. Sometimes something just needs to be pointed out. Like if somebody did something or said something that you feel that was not okay. And I let, I need to let them know that that was not okay. You can always come to somebody and say, you know, I'm sure this wasn't your intention, but I just need to let you know how that made me feel. And I I've had to do this a lot of times with people and I haven't always done it the best way that I could have in the past. A lot of it was when I was really young in my early twenties. And I was just trying to be honest with somebody about this is how I'm feeling about what you said to me or how you acted. And I was just really, really honest. And of course they were completely put off and I've had friends that stopped talking to me. And I mean, you know, I was stepping away from them too, usually, (laughs) but over the years when I'm like, okay, that was a long time ago. And you know, try to reconnect just to say hello. They want nothing to do with me at all. And I'm like, all right, all right. (laughs) But you know, I, and I did premise things with like, look, I love you, but I do not like the way you're treating me right now. And I don't appreciate this. And I am not going to allow myself to be treated that way anymore. So I need to take a step back. And if somebody's going to take it as that criticism and that blame and shame, then that's their prerogative. Even if you're coming at it from a place of trying to be gentle about it, and trying to be as kind as you can and supportive as you can, people are still going to react however they're going to react. And you can't control that. All you can control is yourself. So just make sure that you are aware of your words and actions and energy when you are in a confrontational situation. Now, so it's hard if someone gets in your face and you don't have really the time to take a step back and regroup and think, how do I want to respond to this? But if you can, please remember, we talked about this last week with anger. If something comes up immediately in your face, please just try to breathe and stop and think before you respond and make sure that it's coming from that best part of yourself because you are a good person. You're a really good person. And the thing to remember too is you want to feel good about the situation later when you look back on it. So every situation that comes up, Think about how am I going to feel about this after I've already done or said what I want to say or do? Am I going to feel good about it looking back or am I going to feel bad about myself 
that I made someone else feel bad because I reacted or I overreacted and I was very negative and critical. So you're going to feel better if you handle it in a way that you know your future self is going to be proud of. And it's going to have a more positive, beneficial, productive effect on the person that you're speaking to. So breathe, stop before you respond and decide what the best response is. If any, if any, sometimes you just need to walk away. You can even tell people that you can be like, you know what? I cannot respond to you until I take a few minutes, just go away and just kind of decompress for a minute. So you can always do that. You don't know, cause see, I have a trigger response. Like I, I grew up, um, with a family member who was angry and abusive and in your face. And, you know, if they confronted you about something, they wanted an answer right now and answer me. And blah, blah, blah. so I, and I, I never felt like I had the right to say, no, I need a moment. I, it was always just so jarring and like, ah, uh, and putting me on the spot and making me feel really insecure about how I, I responded to things. And so I either didn't respond at all. Usually I didn't respond at all because I was scared of the repercussions because there could be physical <laughs> abuse in, in these situations when I was younger, if I didn't respond the way this person wanted me to. So there's so many aspects to this, but you can learn to handle confrontation in a positive way that makes you feel good. That makes the other person feel good and leaves everybody feeling better and moving forward a little bit more positive because there's a little bit of growth there. So it can be a positive situation no matter what you're dealing with. So just remember to stop and breathe and think before. And even if someone's in your face, you have the right to stop and say, I need a moment, just back off. I'll get back to you when I have calmed down and I know how I want to respond to this. So you have the right to do that, but just try and do it with love. Just handle confrontation with love as well as you can and think about how you would like to be confronted. If someone needed to talk to you about the same thing, what would you like to hear? How would you like to be treated? And we all want to be treated with respect. So love and respect, that's the best way to handle it. So I hope this helped if you're dealing with this kind of situation or you've dealt with it in the past and you weren't happy with it. And if anything comes up like this in the future, hopefully you have some tools now to handle a little bit better so that you and the other person will walk away feeling good and not feeling crappy. Because we all want to feel good, don't we? <laughs> so this is just another area where you find what feels good and implement it in your life. So thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate you being here. And I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave your comments below. And if you would like these videos delivered straight to your inbox every Friday, jump over to my website, TanaMarshall.com. Join the mailing list. There's a little gift for you there. And you'll get a special note from me every Friday with this message before anybody else gets it. So thank you for joining me. Remember everything I've said. If you're dealing with a situation where you need to confront someone or they're confronting you, handle it with love and respect and you will feel better about it going forward and looking back on it. Take care and I'll see you next week.